Citizens of Jacksonville High School and the Lions of Lane Fair High School. At this time, we would like everyone to please stand, remove your hat, face the flag, and join us in singing our national anthem. Gymnasium at Southeast. We get set for Lanfear and Jacksonville, first of the regional semifinals here in the boys 3A Southeast Regional. These two teams played twice in recent weeks, both in the month of February. In fact, the games were two weeks apart. At Jacksonville on the uh, 7th of February, the Lions won 72 to 36. And if a 36 point win wasn't good enough, Lanfear won the second matchup by 45 points. 89 to 42. Jacksonville at Lanfear, Lions won 89 to 42. So to say that Jacksonville is a decided underdog in this game would be an understatement, but Lanfear's coming off a bad loss. They played poorly, Lincoln played great, and the Railers pounded the Lions last Friday night, and Lanfear hasn't played since. So did they come out full of whatever tonight? We'll see. Be tough to tell. Andrew, you've seen the Lions enough to know they are a very, very good basketball team, but this is the first time all year we see them after a loss, so I'm not sure what to expect, but I do expect they'll win. We'll just see by how much. It'll be interesting to see how, uh, you know, how motivated they come out playing a team that they've beat by 30-plus points twice. Uh, that's definitely an interesting, you know, Factor, especially when you have SHG and Southeast waiting, uh, waiting in tow, one of the two, to play in the regional final. Regional final is here at 7 o'clock on Friday. There's a regional semifinal tonight at Taylorville, where last night Glenwood earned a spot in the regional championship with a 10.59-49 victory over Rochester. The other regional semi at Taylorville tonight is the host Tornadoes against Mattoon. And up at Lincoln tonight... Normal U-High is playing Decatur MacArthur for the right to play the Railers in the regional championship at Lincoln. That'll be played also at 7 o'clock on Friday night. We'll keep an eye later tonight on a sectional game being played down at Okaville. Springfield Lutheran is in action tonight against Whitehall North Green. That game tips at 7, and we'll monitor the result on that one and pass it along to you as the scores come in. Lutheran in a sectional for the first time ever in boys basketball playing North Green, a good North Green team, the Spartans and the Crusaders tonight down at Okaville. Okay, here are the starting lineups for this game. First for the visitors in red, the Jacksonville Crimsons. Their head coach, J.R. Dugan, goes with the same lineup he put on the floor here the other night. 
Nick Kaufman, a six foot junior at guard. His cousin, six five junior Johnny Peak, at one of the forward spots. Tyler Ring at the other forward, a six two senior. In the middle, Blake Hance, six seven senior football star, and six one wingman Michael Fisher. Fisher, a senior who had suffered an ankle injury and missed the second Lanthier game. Michael Fisher, fully healthy, good defender, will be in the starting lineup again tonight. So Kaufman and Peak, Ring, Hance, and Fisher for the 11 and 18 Crimson. Lanthier starters in a pretty consistent lineup for Coach Blake Turner all season. The superstar is Larry Austin, 6'2", senior. The shooting guard is 5'7", sophomore Xavier Bishop. His up front guys are 6'4", senior Darius Milliken, and 6'1", senior DeAndre Alexander. And in the middle, 6'7", senior Scotty Wallace. Scoring averages, Austin at 22.7, Bishop at 17.7. For the Crimsons, their leading scorer is Hans at 14.4. Next best is Nick Kaufman at 7.1. And off the bench, a good freshman, Brady Hayes, averages 7.4 for the Crimsons, who average about 52 points a game. Lanphier averages 69 a game. Officials for the game are Carl Medley, Darren Sorter, and Matt Barnard. They're ready. The red-clad Crimsons are ready. The home white uniforms for Lanphier, black numbers and letters trimmed in orange. Scotty Wallace will step in against Blake Hance. The two big guys. And They'll battle big. a few times tonight. They're big. Okay, here we go. Get set for the Lions and the Crimsons. Referee comes to center court. His ball is in the air, and the tip comes down out of bounds off of Blake Hance and the Jacksonville Crimson. So the ball will start out with the Landfair Lions. Milliken will inbound it to Larry Austin, Jr. He'll cross the 10-second line, and the Lions set up their offense. Right side forecourt to Bishop. Bishop back to Austin, to Alexander, back to Austin. Now the left side wing, they'll give to Bishop. Zone defense played by the Crimsons. Inside feed now to Alexander to Austin. Austin loses it, but Scotty Wallace ends up in his hands and gets the bucket inside for our first two points of the ball game. Lanfeard leads Jacksonville 2 to nothing. 7.26 left in the first quarter. Inbound pass stolen away by the Lanfeard Lions. Given to Austin. Austin's 10-footer won't go. Rebound nearly out of bounds. Saved by the Lions. Out to Bishop. Bishop, three good. Quick five points for the Lions. Kaufman to inbound it for Jacksonville. Inbounds it up the floor to Peak. He'll cross the 10-second line to Fisher. Fisher, good move inside. Right hand off the glass. Bucket, good. Little well, scoop shot from the right low post by Michael Fisher. Good scooper, got it in. Bishop takes another deep three, and he gets it to go. Xavier Bishop couldn't buy a bucket the other night in Lincoln, and he swishes his first two from three-point range. Fisher throws the ball to Peak across the 10-second line. Now gives left side wing to Ring. Ring, circus shot in the lane. It won't go. Rebound comes down to the Lions. Up the floor comes Austin. Austin swerving through the lane. Hands off to Milliken. His shot blocked by Hans. And here come the Crimsons. Kaufman bringing the ball up the floor. Trailing 8-2. 6.22 left in the first quarter. Kaufman now across the 10 second line. Sets up the Jacksonville offense. Looking to go to the left side to Fisher. Now gives in the corner to Peak. Peak working on Alexander. Peak now left side forecourt. Looking for Hans. Ball stolen away by Wallace. Up the floor and he throws it down. Big jump, big dunk for Scotty Wallace. That'll call a timeout for Jacksonville. We'll take it as well. 5.54 left in the first quarter. 10 to 2. Lead for. Lanfear back in 30 seconds. Two 
Jacksonville. Jacksonville with the basketball and the length of the floor to go. And the pressure defense applied by the Lions uh, already caused a few turnovers in this one. A couple of turnovers for Jacksonville, and Landfair gets points off turnovers. That's their game. Fisher to Kaufman, Kaufman to ring, back to Fisher. Up the floor they go to Peak, Peak to Hans. Good feed. Shot on the left side, won't go. Rebound comes to Austin and the Lions. Up the floor he goes into the paint. Jab step, shot won't go as it was, it was altered. Rebound to the Lions, out to Bishop. He'll shoot it. This one short. Rebound to Austin, and Austin's fouled on his way to the basket. He'll shoot some staff carpet free throws. Bishop took that shot, I think, just to see how much he could hit tonight. Well, he hit his first two, rimmed out shot number three. Larry Austin Jr.'s first free throw Friday night at Lincoln was an air ball. Let's see if he can make one here. Off the front iron on this one. For at least the he got the rim. Free throw. <laughs> at got least he got right. the rim. Jacksonville foul on Michael Fisher, the 6'1 senior. 5.32 left in the opening quarter. 10-2, Landfair leads Jacksonville. As Austin misses the second staff carpet free throw, Hans pulls down the board. Gives to Kaufman, full court pressure defense applied by the Lions and a foul in the backcourt by Bishop. Tried to jump up and knock that ball away from Fisher and got a little of Fisher's arm and official Darren Sorter with the call. He and Carl Medley and Matt Barner are the refs for this game. Kaufman waiting across the 10 second line now does as the defense comes for Landfear. Kaufman now to Hans, Hans to Peak, Peak inside, shot on the way, won't go. Second attempt by Ring, won't go. Alexander pulls down the board as it's stripped out of his hands. Now he steals the pass and he's going to be fouled as he was pushing the ball up the floor for Landfear. Another foul on Michael Fisher, his second. 5.05 left in the first quarter. 10-2, Landfair leads Jacksonville. With it's the two fouls, Fisher out, and freshman Brady Hayes, who's going to be a real good player at Jacksonville, is off the bench and in the game. Tribbett also in the game for the Lions. He'll bring the ball up the floor, gives to Bishop, back to Tribbett, inside to Milliken to Alexander. He'll take the baseline shot. It won't go, and here comes Ring the other way. He has the ball stripped out of his hands on the way to the bucket. Out of bounds off of Xavier Bishop is he didn't try to block it. He just tried to strip the ball out of his hands. 10 to 2 Landfear with 444 left in the first. Scotty Wallace got a brief rest. He's back in. So is freshman Yakima Rose for Landfear. Rose nearly steals the pass or steals the ball from Ring. Now the ball is on the floor in the hands of Jacksonville's Hayes. Hayes bucket good. With the right hand, the ball on the ground. He picked it up and just went straight up with it. Tribbett to Bishop, Bishop left side wing, three, good. Xavier Bishop, three for four from three point land to start this one off and a nine point lead for his Lions. Kaufman up the floor working on Rose. Kaufman drives the left side, pull up jumper from six feet, it won't go, ring second attempt will go. Tyler Ring had to muscle that one in, but got it to go. And now at the other end, it's Austin hard to the bucket and the foul as he'll head to the staff carpet free throw line after the and one. His boy to the Lions get down the floor fast. They were in a big time hurry, and Tyler Ring fouled Larry Austin on the made basket. With exactly four minutes to go in the first quarter. Austin will try to make it a 10 point lead. We'll see if Austin can get a staff carpet free throw to fall as he was 0 for 2 in his first attempt. He does get this one to go. Austin's got three all coming on that play. Hayes inbounds it to Kaufman. Full court pressure. Ring now with the basketball back to Kaufman. Kaufman working on Trivet. Crosses the 10 second line. Now right side forecourt. Looking in the corner to Hayes instead. Gives inside to Hans. Hans working right side baseline. Good feed inside to Peak. Peak's going to be fouled. Are they going to get Austin or Bishop on the foul? They had him sandwiched. I think they're going to get Bishop on the reach. Yep, and that's two on little Bishop, and Xavier will have to exit. Landfair will get a sub in for him after Josh Peak shoots the first of his two free throws. Johnny Peak, excuse me. Peak's first free throw is good. That's his first points of the ball game as well. And Landfair does check in off the bench Aaron Timms to replace Xavier Bishop with 3.42 left in the first quarter. 
Peek at the line, looking for point number two of the evening for him. And he gets both staff carpet free throws to fall as that one goes. 342 left in the first quarter. 16 to 8. Lions with the lead. Streaking up the floor. It's Austin to Wallace. Austin count the bucket and the foul. He was he was mugged on the way to the rim there. He fell down. He was in the process of falling down and just kind of tossed the ball up toward the rim and it went in. Larry Austin got a friendly roll off the rim, and now another chance at a three-point play at the line. As Hans called for that foul for Jacksonville, off the side iron, no good for Larry Austin. Kaufman looking to go cross court, now does to Hayes. Hayes back to Kaufman. Now up the floor to ring. Now stolen away by Austin. To Tribbett, to Austin. Austin on his way to the bucket again, and he gets the layup on the right side. And Larry Austin's got seven all within three feet, and he steals it away again. At the other end, another right-handed layup. Nine quick points for Larry Austin. 3-11 left in the first quarter. We got a timeout on the floor. We'll take it as well. Lanfear 22, Jacksonville 8, back in 30 seconds. Timeout, Jacksonville. Welcome back to Southeast High School. In quarter number one, it's 22 points for Lanfear, eight for Jacksonville. 311 left in the first quarter of play. The Lions have came out ready to play tonight. Peek gets the inbound pass, tries to go full court to Hayes, stolen away by Wallace, and here come the Lions to Tribbett. Tribbett walks it across the center court line. Gives left side wing to Rose, back to Tribbett. Now top of the key to Austin. Austin now right side corner, back to Rose. Around the perimeter, the Lions work it. Zone defense still intact for Jacksonville. They're working around the perimeter, right side wing. Austin, Austin to Timms. Timms, good move from the left side. First it was a good pass by Austin, and then a good uh, layup by Timms. Kaufman gets the inbound pass. Has it now stolen away back to Timms. Timms lays it in for his second bucket of the night. Five times in this first quarter, Lanfear has stolen the ball out of the half court, back court trap, and they now do it again. again. Timms with the other steal goes up to the bucket and was fouled on his way to the rim. Absolute theft going on by Lanfear. That is now six times they've taken the ball off the hands of the Crimsons in the backcourt out of a half backcourt trap, and it's working for the Lions about as well as it can work. They have now a 26 to 8 lead, and Aaron Timms fouled hard on the shot. Will shoot two at the line for the Lions. Seven of 12 shooting free throws this season. Aaron Timms gets two here. First staff carpet free throw on the way is good. Andrew, we mentioned the 1A sectional down at Oakville tonight. Springfield Lutheran against North Green. Forgot to mention the 2A sectional semi over at Macon Meridian tonight between the host Hawks and the Port of Blue Jays. We'll keep an eye on that one. They tip at 7 o'clock as well. Tim's at the staff carpet free throw line looking for bucket number two at the line. It's on the way, off the back iron, no good. Blake Hance pulls down the board for Jacksonville, and they'll push the ball up the floor with White. White gives to Hayes, left side, spinning, shot on the way, won't go. Austin pulls down the board, pushing the ball up the floor. Austin, coast to coast, layup good with the right hand. He runs the floor pretty well, don't you think? He sure does. He gets wow. to the basket fast, too. In a blink from end to end. White gets it across the 10-second line to Peak. Peak back to White. White pull up just inside the three-point arc. It won't good. Go gets the second attempt off the backboard to fall for James White. Up the floor, now come the Lions again, leading 29-10 to 10 over Jacksonville. Lanfear with the lead. Rose looking inside to Timms, gets it to Timms, out to Austin. Austin's three, won't go. Timms pulls down the board, gives to Austin, layup good. If you look at Larry Austin's shot chart tonight, everything inside of five feet is gone. 
Hayes driving to the paint. Shot on the way. It will go. Yep, they're going to get uh, hands for goaltending as he tipped it in on the way in. Uh, too bad for Jacksonville because Brady Hayes, the freshman, made a very nice shot high off the glass to go in. And Big Hands right in front of the basket went up thinking it might pop out. He went up and touched the rim after the ball had gone through, but that's a goaltend and wipe off the basket. Minute seven left in the first quarter of play. 31 to 10, the big lead for Lanfear over Jacksonville. Tims to Trivet, Trivet to Alexander in the corner, back to Trivet, working left side forecourt. Drives in, tries to get it to Alexander, or to Milliken, excuse me, and that bounces back out to Alexander. To Rose, right side corner. To Tims, back to Trivet. Now to Rose, Rose gives on the baseline. Back out around the perimeter. The Lions work it. Good ball movement tonight by the Lions, but Tims is going to be calling for a travel. Is that the first Landfear turnover? Yes, it is. With 39 seconds left in the first quarter and a 21-point advantage. St. Landfear has come out just fine after their first loss of the season. Playing with a lot of intensity tonight. Hayes crosses the 10-second line, working between the circles. Looks to the left side. Now uh, has to give it to Peak on the left side for court. He has the ball stolen away by Rose. Rose saves it from going out of bounds. To Tims, to Alexander, and he'll throw it down. Excuse me, Darius Milliken with the big dunk for Lanfear. Ten seconds left in the quarter. Hayes crosses the 10-second line. Now five to shoot. Drives in, now kicks out. White, deep three, and it's good. James White with the bucket to end the first quarter of play. But a huge lead for Lanfear, 20 points. 33 to 13, Lanfear leads Jacksonville. So we hit the second quarter play back in one minute. Lonergan with his first three points of the ball game. Is driving in as Alexander feeds to Wallace. Wallace shot block. Second attempt won't go, but he was called for the travel before he could get that second attempt to be released. 7.31 left in the first half of play. No trouble for the Lions so far in this one as they lead the Crimsons 33 to 16. Inbound pass from Dugan is stolen away. Austin. Layup won't go, but he was fouled. He'll shoot two. Off of Jacksonville's 10th turnover, Larry Austin Jr. will get a couple of free shots. Fouled on that play by Riley Dugan, 6'2 sophomore. Coach's son is among the bench players getting time here tonight with this game already in Lanthier's favor by a wide margin. Only starter Blake Hans on the floor. Four subs with him. And Austin still struggling at the foul line. He had a good season shooting free throws until last Friday night at Lincoln. He hasn't picked up the free throw pace yet here tonight. Second staff carpet free throw, no good. So Austin misses both of them at the free throw line. Here comes 
the Crimson's up the floor they go. Right side, it was Jones. He couldn't hang on to it, but luckily ended the hands of Dugan. Dugan kicks out to Hayes. Hayes back in the corner to Dugan. Now inside, Hans layup good. Hans finally gets in the scorebook, his first two points of the ball game. Up the floor now come the Lions as Scotty Wallace gets it and steps on the out-of-bounds line. So it's going to be a turnover and head the other way is Jacksonville. 7.03 left in the first half, 33 to 18. Landfair leads Jacksonville. Crimson's have trailed by as many as 23, but 15 points behind at the moment. Hayes. They're on an 8 0 run. Hayes crossing the 10 second line, crossover dribble, now drives in, shot on the way off the glass, too hard, no good, and the rebound comes down to Jones. Jones to Dugan. Dugan's fadeaway jumper from 16 feet won't go. Ball on the ground on the rebound. Ends up in the hands of Alexander. Or excuse me, Milliken. Up the floor they go. Austin to Bishop. Bishop reverse layup. Good. We're going to have a stoppage in play here. We'll see what that's all about. Oh, we have an injury. Blake Hance is apparently cramped up down at the other end of the floor. I didn't even know. How do you miss Blake Hance? He wasn't in on the play because he had cramped up and was sitting right in the uh, free throw lane at the other end of the floor here at Sheffield Gym. Looks like he has shaken off the cramps enough to get up and walk off the floor. He's complaining to the officials that he was fouled, then went hard to the floor, then cramped up. They're not buying his argument, but official Carl Medley will listen to Hans and J.R. Dugan complain anyway. 17-point lead for the Lions of Lanfear. Inbound pass comes to Peak. Peak to Dugan. Dugan up the floor to Hayes. Hayes crossing the 10-second line to the left side. Ball knocked out of bounds by the Lions as Alexander was going for the steal. Crimson's put Johnny Peak back in the game for Hans when he exited. Dugan to inbound it. He'll inbound it to White. White back to Dugan. Dugan driving into the free throw lane. Shot on the way. Blocked by Wallace. Wallace up the floor to Austin. Austin loses control of it, and he's going to be called for a travel as he fell into the Jacksonville student section. He got a little help. Johnny Peake pushed him. That's why he traveled, but the officials didn't see that, so Austin charged with the turnover. Landfear's fourth turnover here in the first half. Hayes to inbound it. He gives to Dugan. Dugan, the length of the floor to go, and Alexander on his hip. Now here comes Austin for the trap, up the floor to Hayes. Hayes back to Dugan, guarded by Austin. Looking to drive, now has the ball poked out of his hands, ball on the floor, ends up in the hands of the Crimsons. Now Bishop steals it away. Up the floor he goes to Austin, and he'll slam it down, Larry Austin, Jr. He's got 15 in this first half with 5.49 left in the first, first half of play. 37-18, Landfear with the lead over Jacksonville. Crossing the 10 second line with the pass to Jones. Jones to Hayes. Hayes, right side wing. Guarded by Austin. Guarded tightly, now goes down to a knee and he's gonna be called for a travel. The freshman Brady Hayes had Larry Austin leaning on him, and the officials have a difference in call. One called a travel, the other called a foul, and they are going to call it against Lanthier's Larry Austin, say the lean was a foul, and Hayes wasn't traveling, and credit the officials for getting it right, because the official who called the travel didn't see Larry Austin. He was actually screened by Hayes on the play, and one call overrules the other. It's against Lanthier, and Jacksonville keeps the ball. Dugan inbounds it to Pete. Pete working on Milliken. He's going to be fouled on a hand check foul. So they're trying to clean this one up a little bit now. Mm -hmm. Darius Milliken on the foul that time. Team foul number four on the Lions. Five and a half to play in the half. Landfair up by 19. 37 to 18. Dugan inbound it. Inbounds it. Into the forecourt to Hayes. Hayes back to Dugan. Now inside to Pete. Good spin move, but his shot was blocked but not before a foul. DeAndre Alexander, the 6'1 senior, credited with that foul for the Lions. 37 to 18, Lanfear with the lead over Jacksonville. 521 left in the second quarter of play. Peek at the free throw line, and the staff carpet free throw is good. 
You're headed over to watch St. Bernard Griffin in Southeast. That game will tip about a half hour, uh, probably 20 minutes after this one ends. And Scheffler Jim is filling up. Second attempt on the way, no good for Johnny Peak. Trivet with the rebound up the floor, gives to Bishop in the corner. His three won't go. Rebound comes down to Alexander Milliken, and bucket is good. Darius Milliken with the put back bucket. He's got four, and a 20 point lead for the Lions. Five minutes left in the first half. Dugan now with the basketball. Good feed as a streaking Jones gets the bucket. Colin Jones has his first two points. Trivet now across the 10 second line to Alexander, to Wallace, to Milliken, back to Trivet. Good ball movement. Shot inside the paint is good from the right side for Trivet. Just the right amount of spin from Jordan Trivet as his move to the hoop came in along the right side. Driving in now is Hayes. Hayes, good feed to Jones. Bucket, good. And Colin Jones inside a couple of times. Reserve 6-3 senior for Jacksonville. Got a second bucket. 424 left in the first half as now Alexander pulls up left side elbow. It won't go. Dugan pulls down the rebound behind the back dribble and now picks up his dribble before he crosses the half court line and a foul as he passes to Hayes as Hayes is bumped by Jordan Tribbett. Larry Austin, Aaron Timms, Yakima Rose is going to come into the game for Lanfear as things have gotten a little sloppy, particularly with Austin sitting. He didn't have much of a rest, but he'll re-enter. So the Lanfear five on the floor are Timms and Austin, Tribbett, Bishop, and Rose. Hayes takes the inbound pass for the Crimsons. Crosses the 10-second line, guarded by Bishop. Now drives with the right hand. Shot on the way, and the lane won't go. Rebound comes down to an a hell ball. So it's going to be Lanfear basketball on the possession arrow. Four minutes exactly left in the second quarter. 41 to 23, and this game's really never had a flow to it so far. Yeah, Very the only flow was early with Lanfear getting a lot of takeaways. Trivet working around the three-point line. Gives to Bishop, left side corner. Now he's going to come off the dribble, drive baseline, has his pass intended for Austin, stolen away. Dugan with the steal, gives to Hayes. Hayes working on Trivet. Crossover dribble, pull-up jumper from the three-point line, won't go. And Bishop pulls down the board, pushing the ball up the floor for the Lions. He'll pull up, free throw line jumper is good. Nobody stopped the ball, so Bishop dribbled to the three free throw line and took the jumper and got it to fall. A 20-point lead for Lanfear. Hayes with the basketball looking inside for Hans, and <laughs> Tim's fouls Hans, and Tim's kind of said, I don't know what else I can do other than push him down. I thought the state wrestling meet was over. That was a one-on-one -on -one in the uh, Jacksonville lane between Blake Hans, who outweighs Aaron Timms by 100 pounds. It was a mismatch. Hans got the throw down, but Timms still was able to get up and push Hans, and they call the second guy for the foul. Hans's first free throw is good. So our good friends at Staff Carpet will reward him with the second free throw as we're in the one-in bonus situation. Second staff carpet free throw on the way is good. Austin inbounds it to Trivet. Three minutes left in the first half. Trivet around the perimeter now gives in the corner to Rose. Rose, he'll drive baseline. Acrobatic shot is good at the rim. Made a little shot after he made a little fake. Drove the baseline left side, faked the pass into the middle, kept the ball, and reverse laid it in. White with the basketball for the Crimsons. Picks up his dribble, looks for a backdoor streaking Dugan, Dugan to Peak, stolen away, and here come the Lions behind the back to Timms. Bishop to Timms with a behind the back pass, and we're going to get a timeout on the floor. 2.35 left in the first half. 47 to 25. Lanfear with the lead over Jacksonville back in 30 seconds.
47 to 25. Lanfear with the lead over Jacksonville. 2.35 left in our opening half of play. We've got the Cyclones and the Spartans coming up next in the second semifinal of this Class 3A Regional. Dugan to inbound it, gives it to Peak. Peak double teamed, now looking for Ring, and Ring nearly has the ball stolen away by Trivet. And who are they going to get this foul on, Ring or Trivet? Yeah, they can get it on either. Down Jordan Trivet as he went for the steal and committed the foul right at midcourt. 232 left in the hand. 47-25 after a jam by Aaron Timms on a behind-the-back pass on the three-on-one break for Lanthier. Ring at the line off the back iron. It won't go, so he only gets one staff carpet free throw. Here comes Larry Austin. Austin up the way through the lane. Shot won't go, but he was fouled. He'll head to the staff carpet free throw line. Foul on Johnny Peak, his first for, land, or for Jacksonville. Let's see if Austin can snap out of his free throw woes and hit a few staff carpet free throws. First one on the way is good. Larry Austin now two out of seven at the free throw line in this game. And still has 16 points. As Mitchell and Patton check into the lineup for Lanfear, going deep into the bench already. This will give Lanfear their biggest lead of the game if Larry Austin makes this free shot. And he does. Two for two at the staff carpet free throw line there is Austin. 49 to 25, the 24 point lead for the Lions. Kaufman to ring, ring, looking inside to Hans. Now gives to Hans, right side. To Peak in the corner. Peak looking top of the key to Kaufman. Now gives to Kaufman. Kaufman resetting the Jacksonville offense. To ring, right side forecourt. Two minutes left in the first half. Stolen away by the Lions. Ball now uh, kind of all over the place. Ends up in the hands of Jacksonville to Hans. Hans fouled hard on his way to the... Rim as Tims gets him hard there as Hans fell to the ground. Tims earned that foul. He sure did. It takes a lot to get uh, the big man Blake Hans to the ground. Aaron Tims picks up his second personal. Blake Hans to the line. He's had a good basketball career at Jacksonville, a better football career. He plays football up at Northwestern. First free throw on the way is good for Blake Hans. Good foul shooter, 72%. Three for three in this game. 6'7", senior Blake Hans, H-A-N-C-E, for the Crimsons. Second staff carpet free throw on the way is good. Austin inbounds it to Mitchell. As the Lions looking to bring the ball up the floor. Austin now with the basketball, cross courts to Patton. Patton drives in, kicks out to Mitchell. Mitchell to Austin, Austin attacks, kicks out. Patton, three, off the iron, won't go. Scotty Wallace pulls down the board. Now gives back to Austin, inside, pump fake. Second attempt, won't go. And here comes Kaufman and the Crimsons. Guarded by Mitchell, he'll swing it cross court. Now on the baseline, they give to Peak. Peak working the baseline and... Shoved off. Johnny Peek going to be whistled for the offensive foul. He was double teamed, trapped down in the corner, and he pushed to try to get out of it. Official Darren Sarter said the straight arm was a foul. Minute 20 left in the first half. Mitchell and Patton playing catch with it. Three-quarter court press put on by Jacksonville. Now Mitchell crosses the 10-second line to Austin. Austin to Wallace Scotty. on the baseline. Dribble. Scotty. He got a dribble. Scotty ran in from 20 feet out and never <laughs> dribbled. Can't do that, Scotty. That'd be traveling. He was ready for showtime there. <laughs> he wanted to dunk. He forgot to dribble. 22 second or 22 point lead for Landfear. 57 seconds left in the half. Hans, he'll take the deep jumper. It won't fall. Tim skies for the rebound. Now Austin up the floor on the outlet. Austin gives to Mitchell. Mitchell inside to Tim's Ball knocked away, out of bounds, off of the Crimson. So it'll be Lions basketball. So Milliken checks into the lineup for Tim's. 43 seconds left in the first half. And a 22-point lead for Lanfear. 
They inbound it way back in the forecourt to Austin. Austin to Milliken, back to Austin. Austin, Ooh. good no look pass to Mitchell. Bucket, good. Beautiful assist from Larry Austin to Shakari Mitchell. 30 seconds left in the half. Kaufman up the floor. Can't throw a better whip pass than that, can you? You can. Kaufman now guarded by Milliken in the forecourt. Between the circles, 19 seconds to shoot. Now gives left side to Ring. Ring in the forecourt. Working on Austin, 12 to shoot. Gives to Kaufman, right side forecourt, under 10 seconds, eight seconds. Driving in now is Kaufman. Scoop shot with the left hand is good. Wallace, full court inbound pass to Austin. He can't get a shot off, or he does, and we're gonna have a foul on the play. Larry Austin will shoot with no time on the clock. Couple of free shots coming. Andrew, I think these will be the first staff carpet free throws of the season that have been shot with zero on the clock. I would say that's pretty accurate. Larry free. made his last two, but he has struggled at the line tonight. He gets his first staff carpet free throw to fall for point number 19 of the half for Larry. Second staff carpet free throw, gets the shooter's roll and gets it to fall. He's got 20 and a 53 to 29 lead for his Land Fair Lions. We head to the half. We'll be back in three minutes here on Sports Radio 1450 with Land Fair 53, Jacksonville 29. They'll probably be turning in the equipment tomorrow. It'll be interesting to see here. I, I would be very surprised if you, you see Austin or Bishop or Wallace or any of the starters in the fourth quarter. But yeah. they all come out on the floor to start the second half. We'll see how Blake Turner wants to play it. I imagine he'll want to play it to build on the 24-point lead here just at the start of the third, as you suggest. Starters for both sides. The Crimsons with the basketball. It's Kaufman across the 10-second line, working on Milliken to ring. Ring looking inside the hands. Ball stolen away by Alexander. Up the floor to Bishop. Bishop lob inside to Austin, but it was uh, a non-connection, and now here comes Ring the other way. Up the floor he gives to Hans. Hans layup good. Blake Hans now has five points. 22-point lead for Lanfear as a quick pass looking to go inside was Bishop and stolen away by Ring. So back-to-back -back turnovers start for the two possessions for Lanfear. Nine turnovers for the game for the Lions off those two. White with the basketball gives to Kaufman, right side wing. The six-foot junior working on Milliken. Now gives to Ring, left side forecourt. He'll spin, drives in, big hop step, gives to Peak, right side, baseline jumper, good. Johnny Peak with that basket. Bishop with the basketball gives to Austin. Standing near the 10 second line. The Lions in no hurry here as they reset their offense. To Bishop in the corner, right side wing. Back to Austin, Austin good feed inside to Milliken. Milliken to Wallace, layup won't fall, but he was fouled. Scotty got poked in the eye, it looked like. Hit in the head anyway as he made his move to the basket. See if he can shake that off and make a couple of free throws off the fourth personal foul committed by Jacksonville's Johnny Peake. First staff carpet free throw off the front iron, won't fall for the Lions. Scotty Wallace has been a better free throw shooter in this his senior year than he was earlier in his career. That was his first staff carpet free throw of this game, and the Lions now in the game are just 6 of 13 at the line. This staff carpet free throw is good. One of two at the line was the big man for Lanfear. Their lead is 19 points, 54 to 33. Excuse me, 21 points. Where'd you go to high school? Hey, Catlin High School. Ring up the floor. Check the math books. Must have <laughs> a lot of dust on them. Weren't used very often. White with the basketball now. Right side forecourt looking inside for Hans. Hans has it stolen away on the pass. As it was Milliken to Alexander. He drives in and he just throws the ball up in the air as he was fouled. A lot of Crimson's ended up on the floor on the play. The officials, Carl Medley and Darren Sorter and Matt Barnard, will try to sort this out. 
They're going to call this foul on the floor. It's on Nick Kaufman of Jacksonville. J.R. Dugan is questioning the call, the head coach of the Crimsons. In all that mass of humanity under the basket, he wasn't sure what happened. Alexander looks to inbound it. Ball knocked away into the backcourt, but picked up by Austin. Gives to Rose, right side wing, back to Austin. Around the three-point arc, they work it to Milliken on the baseline. His shot on the way, it's blocked. Ball knocked out of bounds on the rebound. It'll be Crimson basketball. Cyclones are headed to their locker room. That'll free up some seats in the south end zone for fans who are coming in for their game against Southeast. Ring heads to the basket. His shot blocked by Wallace. Ball on the rebound. Goes out of bounds off the Crimsons. So it'll be Lanfear basketball. Schiffler Jim isn't quite full yet, but it's getting close. With the uh, SHG Southeast game looming after this one. 53, 5.53, excuse me, left in the third quarter of play. Bishop with the basketball. It gives to uh, Alexander, or to Milliken, to Wallace. Back out to uh, Bishop. Deep three on the way, won't go. Ring pulls down the long board for Jacksonville. Across the 10-second line, White. White to uh, Jones. Jones inside to Hans. Turnaround jumper won't go. Second attempt won't go. Out of bounds off of... The Lions, so it'll stay Crimson basketball. Lanfear 54, Jacksonville 33. That's a 21-point lead for Lanfear. Inbound pass kicked, so we'll try this one again. White to inbound it. Gets it to Kaufman. Kaufman fadeaway, seven-footer is good. Nick Kaufman with four, and Larry Austin oh. streaks up the floor. Count Ooh. the bucket and the foul Ooh. as he got uh, to the rim in a hurry and got the bucket and the foul. About the third or fourth time tonight he's done that. You have to have the flexibility of Gumby to lean back and make that shot. As Larry Austin was getting undercut and fouled, he reached back and flipped that one up off the glass, off the rim, and it went in. Blake Hans called with the foul, his second. Austin with 21 points this evening. Looking for point number 22 at the staff carpet free throw. It's on the way and good. The Lions still putting on full court pressure. Jacksonville to inbound it. They get it to ring. Ring. Double teamed. Now gives to Kaufman. Kaufman, good pump fake, now gives back to Ring. Ring nearly has the ball stripped away, gets it back, gives to White. White, good feed inside, shot won't go, but we have a foul on the attempt as Jones went to the basket, but he was fouled by Aaron Timms. It'll be the third personal on Lanfear Reserve, Aaron Timms, with 5.03 left in the third quarter. Getting close to 7 o'clock where other games will be starting at sites where they're playing just a single game tonight, including Taylorville, where the Tornadoes are playing Mattoon in a regional. Lincoln, where MacArthur and New High are to start at 7 o'clock in 3A. 2A sectional semi over at Macon, where Meridian takes on Petersburg Porta. I should say Petersburg AC Porta. And then the uh, game down at uh, Okaville tonight. That's where Lutheran plays North Green in the 1A sectional. Jones 1-2 at the staff carpet line. Now the Lions head the other way. Bishop shot from the right side baseline. Won't go. Wallace's second attempt. He was going to be fouled. Is That foul is going to be called on Fisher. 4.51 left in the third quarter. Second half could take a while if we're already five fouls in the first two and a half minutes. Big lead for Lanfear as Scotty Wallace extends it another point with the first staff carpet free throw. 58 to 36. That lead for Lanfear. 22 points. Second staff carpet free throw off the back iron won't fall. Peak or Jones pulls down the board, gives to Kaufman to Ring. Ring cross courts it up the floor, but stolen away by Austin. Up the floor, driving through the paint, layup good. Count the basket and the foul. Don't you like the zigzag move to the hoop? Larry Austin took one big step one way, zigged the other way, and zagged to the hoop. 
Nice move by the All-Stater, Larry Austin Jr. Foul on Jacksonville on the play. It was against Colin Jones of the Crimsons. Austin's free throw on the way is good. Staff carpet free throw, 25 points for Larry Austin Jr. Ring with the basketball up the floor, crosses the 10 second line. Good feed inside to Jones, layup good. That's the way you beat a press. At the other end, it's Xavier Bishop from the right side wing, deep three, and he'll get it to go. Xavier Bishop with that bucket, now steals the inbound pass. No look pass, bucket by Trivet is good. Jordan Trivet up the floor. Now Jacksonville at the other end, deep three by Jones. It won't go, ball out of bounds, off the Lions, and it's going to be Crimson basketball, 66 to 38, Lanfear with the lead over Jacksonville. 4.03 left in our third quarter. Fisher to inbound it. He inbounds it to Jordan Trivet on the other team. He full court passes it up to Bishop. His shot blocked, but Larry Austin follows through on that. We have a little extracurriculars after uh, Bishop gets off the floor. And after Larry Austin got that putback bucket to fall, the Lanfair lead is 30 with 3.54 left in the third quarter. Akima Rose will enter for Lanfear, and Xavier Bishop will take a seat primarily so his coach can settle him down a little bit. He got a little, a little anxiety attack and mouthing off to the Jacksonville kids after that Austin bucket. Kaufman gets the inbound pass, and Lanfear up the floor. Or excuse me, Jacksonville up the floor. They're going to have it nearly stolen away. Jones saves the day, looking for a wide open Hans, he has it stolen away, and Austin throws it down at the other end. And, and he's going to be called the T for hanging on the rim. Yeah. They've got to call that. It was an extra beat. He could have gone up and slammed it and climbed down. Instead, he went up and slammed it and hung there for an extra second. Fans don't like it, but the officials made the right call. Very nice play by Austin, though. Yeah. The two-hand power dunk. Goffman at the staff carpet free throw line gets the first one to fall. There are some leagues where they let that go, but not in the regional. One of two for the staff carpet free throws was Mr. Goffman. 3.36 left in the third quarter of play, 70-39. to 39. His Lanfair continues to stretch out the lead. Kaufman crosses the 10-second line, gives to Fisher. Fisher to ring, ring with the basketball. Cross courts to Kaufman. Kaufman to Fisher, left side, driving, now gives to Ring. Ring bodies his way inside. His shot won't go. Austin pulls down the board. He'll push the ball up the floor. Crossover dribble. Good feed to Alexander Bucket. Good. Another terrific assist for Larry Austin Jr. He has three different assists tonight that have been really beautiful passes to teammates who have scored on the play. Lanfear up big, Ring takes a three, it won't fall. Lanfear pulls down the board, Trivet up the floor. Gives to Austin, back to Trivet. Shot, blocked, but he was fouled by Ring. 2.50 to play in the third, 72-39 Lanfear. Lions will be in action here, and it's a seven o'clock regional championship on Friday. Winner to be determined in tonight's second game here at Southeast between the Spartans and Sacred Heart Griffin. At the line, Jordan Trivet, his first staff carpet freebie on the way is good. Five points for the guard, junior guard for Lanfear. Second free throw, no good. Hans pulls down the board, and here come the Crimsons. They trail 73 to 39. Lanfair with the big lead. Ring looking across the 10 second line now does to Hans. Hans jumper from the left side wing is good. Blake Hans has seven, two and a half minutes left in the third quarter. 
Trivet with the basketball, gives to Milliken. Now up to Rose, back to Trivet around the perimeter. The Lions work it. To Alexander, to Rose. Rose, big jump stop. Now gives to Milliken, out to Trivet. Three on the way is good. Jordan Trivet. A 29 point lead for Lanfear. Hans with the basketball, nearly has it stolen away. Now gives to Kaufman. Kaufman, good feed to Ring. Ring out to Jones. Three won't go. Austin pulls down the board and pushes the ball the other way. Behind the back dribble, now drives into the lane, tries to pass it to Milliken, but it's going to be knocked out of bounds off of Jacksonville and be Lanfear basketball. Larry Austin to inbound it. A minute 46 left in the third quarter. Austin always plays hard, no matter the score. Austin inbounds it to Milliken, to Alexander, now back to Austin. Austin looks at the three, now takes the three and gets it to go. 32 points for the standout for Lanfear. A minute 30 left in the fourth quarter, third quarter, and he nearly steals that one, but the Crimson's in back up with it. To Kaufman, three, good. Nick Kaufman's got eight. Here comes Lanfear the other way. Good pump fake inside by Milliken. Bucket, good. They can score at will tonight. They've got 81 points. Yeah, we'll see if they get to the century mark tonight or if they'll pull the foot off the gas pedal in the fourth quarter. Up the floor, now Fisher with the right hand gets the bucket to fall. Michael Fisher's got four points for Jacksonville. They trail Lanfear, 81 to 46. 51 seconds left in the third period. Pulling up is Bishop. It looks like they're going to maybe hold for the last shot here of the third quarter. Bishop gives to Rose, 36 seconds left, and Bishop now drives in on the right side baseline, shoots the floater and gets it to go. Xavier Bishop's got 18. Still full court pressure applied by the Lions. Kaufman up the floor to Ring. Ring working left side forecourt. Working on Bishop, now driving in, looking for Hans off Hans's forehead, out of bounds. Lions basketball, 16 to shoot. 83 to 46. The big lead for Lanfear. 12 seconds to shoot as Bishop crosses the 10 second line. Now seven to shoot. Rose with the basketball. Outside deep, three on the way by Bishop with four seconds. It won't go. Deep rebound comes back to Bishop. He'll shoot it again and banks it in and gets it to go. Xavier Bishop gets his 21st point of the ball game and his Lanfear Lions head to the fourth quarter leading by 40, 86 to 46 over Jacksonville as we head to the fourth quarter here on Sports Radio 1450 back in one minute. They lead at 89 to 46. Five subs into the ball game for the Lions as Hayes at the other end drives through the paint. Shot won't go. Second attempt won't go, but he was fouled. They'll get some staff carpet freebies. Good to see Nick Patton get that early shot to go after he had missed a basket attempt earlier. Nick Patton, the outstanding state caliber golfer. 
Popping in a three to start the fourth quarter for Lanfear. Lions up 89-46 in this regional semi. Larry Austin Jr. done for the night with 32 points, six rebounds, four assists, five steals. Not a bad line. Not bad at all. As Hayes gets that free throw to fall, I believe he got one of two. Yes, he did. Seven and a half minutes left in this one. The countdown is on to Southeast and SHG. Trivet takes a three, and he'll bank it in for Lanfear. We were talking about if they'd make it to the century mark. I think they will. Maybe without trying real hard now that they lead 92 to 47. The big lead for the Lions. Dugan with the basketball for Jacksonville. Gives to Peek. Peek inside to Hans. Hans is fouled on his way to the rim. It's going to get Aaron Timms with this one. Well, J.R. Dugan will sub out Blake Hans here shortly, you would think. Senior headed to play college football, wrapping up his basketball career tonight. 6'7", senior Blake Hans. First free throw on the way for Hans is good. He'll get one more staff carpet freebie. We're told they had a big crowd at the bowl in Jacksonville last Friday night for their senior night. Is there enough Crimson fans here would probably want to applaud Hans one more time. As Hans gets both staff carpet free throws to fall, he's got nine. Lanfear leads big, 92 to 49. Rose with the basketball gives to Mitchell. Mitchell, good feed inside to Moore. His shot was rejected, and here comes Jacksonville the other way. And it's going to be Hayes, his shot blocked by Rose. Up the floor come the Lions, and nearly out of bounds, and they're going to say he was out of bounds as Caesar chased down after it, but he stepped on the out of bounds line trying to save it. 92 to 49. Lanfear leads Jacksonville. 647 left in this one. Yakima Rose went out and Dwayne Jacobs has come in for Lanfear. Joining Jakari Mitchell and Caesar Patton. Anthony Moore. Dugan with the basketball drives in. Hands off to his big man, Hans. And Hans has got 11 now. Here comes Mitchell up the floor for Lanfear. Gives to Patton, right side wing. He'll cross court it to Jacobs. Back to Mitchell. To Patton in the corner, right side. Three, won't go. Put back attempt, won't go. Rebound now comes down to Jacksonville. Lonergan, he has his pass stolen, but uh, not controlled by Lanfear. As here comes Jacksonville the other way on the turnover. Cross court pass tipped, but in the hands of Fisher to Hayes. Hayes inside of the big man, Hans. Turnaround jumper, good. Blake Hans now with 13. 5.50 left in the fourth quarter. Patton around the perimeter with the Lions working. Now driving to the right side. Shot on the way, won't go. Second attempt is going to be blocked as well. Out of bounds. Nope, we're going to have a foul. Two shots for Anthony Moore, the six-foot junior for the Lions. 5.40 to play, 92-53. Lanthier the lead. Lions will go to Devin Harris. 6'6 six, six, sophomore after this first free shot by Anthony Moore of the Lions. First free throw on the way is good. 93 to 53, the 40 point lead for Lanfear. Anthony Moore in varsity play this season, now a perfect three for three at the free throw line. Let's see if he can keep perfection going with this next staff carpet free throw. As Jackson checks into the Lanfear lineup for Patton, he does keep it going. He got both staff carpet free throws to fall and a 41-point lead for his Lions. Five and a half minutes left in this one. Hayes at the other end. Deep three from the left side corner. Corner pocket three is good. Brady Hayes with that bucket. Jacobs up the floor. Cross courts it to Moore, back to Jacobs. He'll take a deep three, it won't fall. Hans pulls down the board. I'd say that would be an ill-advised shot in a close game. Hayes to Hans, Hans three, it won't go. Jacobs pulls down the board. He has his outlet pass stolen away. And here comes Fisher, Fisher in the lane, jumper good. 
Michael Fisher's got six. Jackson across the 10 second line. Play and catch with Jacobs. Jacobs now has his pass stolen away by Dugan. Here comes Dugan up the floor. Gives to the left side to Hayes. Hayes in the corner to Fisher. Now up top to Dugan. Inside to Hans. Hans, bucket, good. Count the basket and the foul. As Devin Harris, the 6'6 sophomore, called for that foul. Couple of sectional score updates after one quarter over at Macon. The host Meridian Hawks trail Porta. Porta 13, Meridian 11 after one quarter in the sectional at Macon. Meridian and down at uh, Oconville. Early lead for Lutheran, 10 to 8 with about three and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. A 10-8 lead for Lutheran over Whitehall North Green. It's in the 1A sectional semifinals. Nick Panton back into the game. Dwayne Jacobs out for Lanfear. Going to give Nick a chance to chuck a couple more threes, we hope. With 4.31 left in this one. Hans gets it to go from the free throw line. 4.25 left in the fourth quarter. Big lead for Lanfear and make it even bigger as Anthony Moore, the junior, hits a three. 97-61. Bringing three up Nick Panton to get a three to make it 100. The left side wing, Jacksonville with the basketball. They get it inside to the big man, Hans. He's going to be called for a travel. Turnover to Lanfear. Well, they didn't put Nick Panton back in the game not to shoot. So let's get Nick the ball and see if he can can one and make it 100 points for the Lions. Jackson will cross the 10-second line. He gets it, now feeds it inside to his big man. Shot on the way by Harris. It won't go. Rebound comes down to Jacksonville. Up the floor they go to Silas. Silas, shot on the way. Good count the basket in the foul. He threw it up with one hand, got it to go, and was fouled. He gets the um, conventional four-point play chance off that made basket. Clark Silas, 5'11", senior for Jacksonville. Four-point play. He gets the staff carpet free throw to fall, so he gets a four-point play. Lion Fear up the floor. Jackson with the basketball. They feed it inside to the big man, Harris. He kicks out. His shot is blocked. Jacob's shot is blocked. Back to Harris. Shot on the way. Good. Count the basket and the foul. Devin Harris. Can make it 100 with a staff carpet free throw for Lanfear. 6'6 six, six, sophomore Devin Harris to the free throw line, and the Lions fans stand and cheer him on. Harris at the line. 339 to go and 100 points at the ready. Left handed free throw on the way is good. It's Devin Harris with the three point. Play there, 100 to 65, the 35 point advantage for Lanfear. Their first 100 of the season. Jacksonville looking inside, gets it to Hans. Hans' shot won't go, but he was fouled. Is uh, the Crimson's looking inside for their big man? Lanfear's previous high, by the way, in a single game was 89 against the Crimsons a couple of weeks ago. And they're at 100 tonight. 100 to 66 with 3.29 to go. Hans gets the first staff carpet free throw to fall. Second one on the way is good as well. Blake Hans with 21 points now. Up the floor, uh, Lanfear driving to the bucket and a foul. So it looks like uh, the Lanfear man heading to the free throw line is number 31, Calvin Caesar. Fourth foul on Blake Hans. Checking his third, third foul on Hans. Still in there in the dying minutes of this, his final game of the season. Final game of a good career for the big man from Jacksonville. the line. Caesar spins it, eyes it, flies it off the back iron. It won't go. Harris pulls down the offensive board for Lanfear. 
They get it back out to Jackson. Jackson gives right side wing to Moore, or to Jacobs, excuse me, now in the corner. Now a left-handed shot on the way from the block by Caesar is good. His first two points of the ball game, 102 to 67. Lanfear with the lead. Jacksonville with the basketball, and it's Brannon gives top of the key to Turner. Turner hands off to Silas. Silas looking to Hans, finds Hans. <laughs> A few power dribbles before he can go up with it. He's going to be called for the travel. 25th turnover for Jacksonville. That's tough to come back for for any team. 245 left in this one ahead of Southeast and SHG. That'll be next right here on Sports Radio 1450. It's Jacobs takes the deep three. It won't go. Second attempt won't go by Moore. And here comes Jacksonville the other way. Right side wing with the basketball is Baker. His pass stolen away by Jackson. He'll streak up the floor. Shot blocked, but he was fouled. So Jackson will head to the line. Good news for Lutheran fans after one quarter down at Oakaville. Springfield Lutheran leads 20 to 13 over Macon Meridian. Lutheran playing in a sectional for the first time ever in boys basketball and with a seven point lead after one. Down at Oakaville. 102 to 67 is our score here. Crimson's Just... had to check out one of their reserves, Clark Silas, who had a little blood on his elbow. 2.21 left in this one. It's not been in doubt since the beginning. Yeah, Lanthier ran out to a first quarter lead of 33 to 10, and that was about all we needed to see. First free throw by Jackson is no good. He'll get one more staff carpet free throw. And it's off the back iron as well. It won't go as Blake Hans pulls down another rebound. Hans is the biggest and the oldest guy on the floor right now. Jacksonville with the basketball and Baker cross courts it to Lonergan. Lonergan gives in the corner to Hillis. Back to Lonergan. Now to Hans. Hans to Lonergan. Hans looking for the basketball now. A right side. Gives the left side wing. Shot on the way. Won't go. Jacobs pushes the ball up the floor to Jackson. Jackson left handed layup. Good. Count the basket and the foul. Daryl Jackson's got his first two points and heads to the staff carpet free throw line. Let's see if he can get a freebie to fall. Corey Baker of Jacksonville committed the foul. Free throw on the way, hits the back of the glass and falls. Minute 45 left in this one. Jacksonville with the basketball. 2-3 zone, it looks like. Uh, nope, an open man man defense applied by the Lions as Hans gets the entry feed and he was fouled. Foul on Devin Harris. Blake Hans at the line. Shooting two staff carpet free throws. First free throw won't fall. Excuse me, it was just one in bonus. Jackson, or Landfair with the basketball, stolen away now by Jacksonville. We have a foul as Moore went for the steal. As Turner had the basketball, Moore went for the steal and blatantly fouled him. The 37th foul that these officials have called in this game. One of the reasons this game is run a little long. Another is that the two teams have scored 172 points. First step, carpet free throw won't fall, and the one in bonus, they won't get a second. Jackson with the basketball. Looking inside to Harris, gives it to Harris, back inside to Jackson. And now Jacksonville with the basketball. Hans looking to pull up from three, can't do it. Now the pass stolen away. Jackson up the floor, shot on the way, won't go. Rebound comes down to Lanfear. Kick out to Jackson, layup, won't go, but he was fouled, he'll head to the line. The game that wouldn't end is in the final minute. 58 seconds to go. Big Lanthier lead for Lanthier. Comfortably. 105 to 67. 
make that 106 to 67 as Jackson banks in the free throw. Jackson's second free throw on the way, off the iron, won't go. Rebound comes down to the Crimsons. Lonergan will bring it across to the 10 second line. Gives on the right side to Turner. Now to Hans, top of the key. He takes the three and he won't get it to go. Rebound comes down to Turner. Turner, shot on the way is good. Count the basket and the foul. The 5'10 junior fired up after that one. 38 seconds left in this one. 69 points for Jacksonville. First free throw and only free throw won't fall. Jackson will push the ball up the floor now for Lanfear. 30 seconds left in this one. It's Jackson goes coast to coast, layup good. He's got six. Jacksonville now with the basketball. Hans looks for a three. This one misses everything out of bounds. It's going to be Lanfear basketball with 19 seconds left in this one. The game that won't end. 108 to 69. 16 seconds left in this one. Lanfear with the basketball. Nearly stolen away and uh, now it's going to be thrown out of bounds by Lanfear with six seconds left. Jacksonville will inbound it. Blake Hance really wants a three here. Yes, he does. Six seconds and they're gonna try to get it to Hance but it's gonna be stolen away by the Lions out of bounds. 2.6 seconds left. Jacksonville will inbound it. We've had a lot of stoppage here in the last minute. Hans gets the inbound feed. Three on the way is good. So Blake three, or Blake Hans ends his uh, high school basketball career with a three. But his Crimson's fall, 108 to 72. We'll be back in three minutes to wrap this one up and get you set for Southeast and SHG here on Sports Radio 1450.